Libby and her husband were out at sea, celebrating their wedding anniversary. But when she woke up, she found herself covered in blood with a sharp knife on the floor. She called out for her husband but got no response. Soon after, the police arrived, and Libby was taken into custody as a suspect. Her trial began quickly, and a huge insurance policy was found in her home, naming her as the beneficiary. Libby was at a loss for words, and everyone believed she killed her husband for the insurance money. As expected, Libby was sentenced to prison for murder. Before leaving, she entrusted her son to her best friend along with her husband's insurance money, hoping she would take good care of him. But when she tried calling her friend later, there was no answer. Libby was worried, unable to sleep night after night. Fortunately, she managed to reach her friend, a schoolteacher, through the school. She urgently asked about her son and asked for him to come to the phone. But during the call, she overheard her son calling someone else dad before the line went dead, leaving her calls unanswered. At that moment, Libby realized it was all a conspiracy by her husband and her friend who not only took the insurance money but also boldly became her son's guardians. This was unbearable for Libby in prison, until a former lawyer, now a fellow inmate, informed her that the law won't allow a person to be convicted of the same crime twice. She had already been punished for killing her husband, meaning if she found him alive she couldn't be charged again for taking action against him. This revelation motivated Libby, who then began to rigorously train herself, never thinking of giving up regardless of the weather. Her good behavior eventually led to a parole opportunity after six years. Seizing this chance, Libby started to track down her husband and friend using the school's administrative system for leads. However, with hundreds of teachers sharing her friend's name nationwide, the search seemed daunting. So, she took a risk and broke into the school her friend worked at, retrieving her social security information from the records room. But just as she got what she needed, the police discovered her, and Libby had to flee through a window with the police hot on her heels. Despite her efforts to escape, Libby was ultimately unable to evade the police. On the way back, she pleaded her innocence to the parole officer who was skeptical, as he believed every prisoner thinks they're wrongfully convicted. He then handcuffed Libby to the car handle and stepped away for a drink, carelessly leaving the keys in the ignition. Libby, handcuffed and deep in thought, noticed a pipe not far behind her. Seizing a sudden idea, she pressed the accelerator, aiming to break the handcuffs by hitting the pipe but they held fast. Remaining calm, she tried again without success. Hearing the noise, the parole officer hurried back. In a moment of desperation, Libby floored the accelerator, driving the car into the sea. Realizing the danger, the parole officer had no choice but to unlock Libby's handcuffs before they could both get to safety. Against all odds, Libby not only stole the parole officer's gun but also managed to lose him with her incredible stamina. She first visited her mother, who was over 60, and then set off on a path of revenge in her mother's old pickup truck. She pretended to buy a car at a dealership to use her friend's social security card to locate her residence. She arrived at the address registered to the social security card, only to find the house locked and seemingly uninhabited for a long time. A neighbor informed Libby that her friend had died from a gas leak four years ago, and her husband had left with their son shortly after the incident. Libby's first thought was that her friend's death might be linked to her husband. Libby researched the incident online and unexpectedly found a newspaper article featuring her husband's favorite painting which was for sale. She visited the gallery, pretending to be interested in buying the painting and obtained the seller's information, which confirmed her husband's new identity and his purchase of a hotel with the insurance money. The hotel was bustling with nightly parties. Libby dressed in a gown made a bold entrance at one of these parties. Her husband was shocked to see her, fearing exposure. Without saying a word, Libby took him off the stage, proposing a deal. Despite his attempts to blame their friend for his actions, Libby was unconvinced, believing her friend's death was no accident and orchestrated by her husband. Libby agreed to meet her son in a crowded cemetery hoping her husband wouldn't dare any tricks. The next day she saw her son but he ran away when she called his name. She chased after him, only to lose sight of him and be knocked unconscious by her husband. The boy was not her son but a hired imposter. Libby woke up in a coffin next to a mummified body. She used the stolen gun to escape, only to find the cemetery gates locked by her husband. She had no choice but to break a window to get out. Libby, covered in dirt and seething with rage, was about to confront her husband in the hotel ready for a showdown. Suddenly she was pulled into a corner by someone, it was the parole officer. Libby, overwhelmed with emotion, broke down in the parole officer's arms as if she had seen a family member. She had endured so much over the years. Shortly after, the parole officer confronted her husband in his office, having already uncovered the truth about his fake death. He presented the evidence without hesitation, exposing the husband's deceit. However, the husband remained calm upon hearing the parole officer's accusations, confident that the parole officer wasn't there to arrest him. So Mr. Davis came here to make a deal. Otherwise, I guess you would have gone straight to the police. A million dollars. It's a nice round figure. <laughs> the parole officer suggested killing Libby, to which her husband claimed he had already done so. Just then Libby entered gun in hand surprising her husband. The parole officer continued to intimidate him, adding to the tension. Libby chose not to kill her husband, believing that imprisoning him for life would be a more fitting punishment. Her husband was puzzled, questioning how a fraud charge could result in a life sentence. At that moment, the parole officer calmly presented a recorder, revealing that the husband had just confessed to murder. In a panic the husband drew a gun and shot the parole officer then turned the gun towards Libby intending to kill her as well. Suddenly, the wounded parole officer managed to tackle him, leading to a struggle on the ground. 
However, due to his injuries, the parole officer was quickly overpowered. As the husband aimed the gun to finish him off, Libby fired several shots at her husband. The husband died in frustration and the parole officer was saved. With his assistance, Libby regained her freedom. She went to her son's school and immediately spotted him running on the playground. Despite six years apart, she recognized her son at first glance. Calling out his name, her son turned in disbelief. He walked towards her and they embraced tightly, reuniting after so many years. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this.